Good day everyone. So for today's experiment, we will perform experiment 4, the coefficient of static friction. The objective of this experiment is to determine the coefficient of static friction mu s by sliding the block down a board that acts an inclined plane. Second, to determine the coefficient of static friction using the board with a pulley mounted on a horizontal position and applying known force to the block. Third, comparing the different values of the coefficient of static friction obtained by the two different techniques. And lastly, demonstrate that the coefficient of static friction is independent of the normal force. So previously, we have learned that there are different types of forces and these are the types of contact forces. First, is this is the tension force, spring force, normal force, frictional force, and applied force. We will focus on the frictional force. We will focus first on frictional force. Now remember, if I have a mass on top of a table, we will have forces applied on it. So the first one is the weight. Since the, our object has a mass, definitely it has a weight. And based on the third law of motion, in every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. Since our object is not moving along y and there is a force going downward, there should be another force that is acted on our object to make the system in equilibrium. And that will be the force applied by the table, which is the normal force, which is going up. And remember, since our object is in equilibrium along y, so the amount of weight is just equal to the amount of normal force. If we will try to slide our object going to the right, there is another force that is applied by our surface, which is what we call the frictional force. The frictional force, the direction of the frictional force is going to the left because frictional force is always opposing to the sliding. So if our object is going to the right, the frictional force is going to the left. If our object is going to the left, the frictional force is going to the right. Aside its opposes to the sliding, it is always parallel to our surface. Now, the amount of frictional force is also dependent to the type of surface because there are surfaces that is very rough like concrete and there are surfaces like, that are very smooth like an ice because every surface has its coefficient and we call this as the coefficient of static friction. Since the type of surface is involved in frictional force, so we will have the formula for frictional force which is F is equal to the coefficient of static friction times its normal force. And remember, to get the coefficient of static friction, we will just get the frictional force divided by its normal force. So for the first procedure, to get the coefficient of static friction, we will divide the weight of the pan and the load, which is this, divided by to the weight of the carrier and the load, which is this. For procedure 2, we will get the coefficient of static friction by getting the rise and the run. For the rise, we will have we will measure from point A to point B. So this is point A to point B. And for the run, we will have point B to point C. Now we will do four trials for each procedure. So for trial 1, 2, 3 and 4, we will use this carrier and the load. So for trial 1, we only have the carrier. So we will get the mass of this. For trial 2, we have the carrier plus 1 load. For trial 3, we have carrier plus 2 loads. And for trial 4, we have the carrier plus 4 loads. We will use the same object for trial 1, 2, 3 and 4 for procedure B. After we do the truth we will get here the, our average coefficient of friction from procedure A and this is the average coefficient of static friction from procedure B. Then we will get the average of the two. So you will have to add divided by two. Then we will also get the percentage difference. For the percentage difference, we will get the difference of the two coefficients 
two values of our coefficient of static friction make it positive because the sign here is absolute means it's always positive then divide it to the average then multiply it to 100 to make it a percentage then after that you will proceed to answer page 38 for answering the question also add another paper for showing your complete solution on this experiment